I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. Today I want to talk about not refinishing antiques. Although sometimes it's necessary to strip a piece, in general, I think people are too quick to refinish because they don't know what else to do. In today's video, I repair the finish on a small clock case. It's not an antique clock. And although anybody could justify refinishing the entire piece because of the extent of the damage, I chose not to. I wanted to save as much as the original as possible because the clock was being repaired for sentimental reasons. And the point I want to make is this. Always try to repair a finish, especially if it's not an antique, because the same, the same methods that are used to repair modern furniture finishes are the same ones you'll use to repair antique finish. And it just takes practice, 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 and it's great to practice on pieces that aren't antiques. I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you learn something. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice clock. It's a carriage clock because of the handle on top. It's not an antique. It has a conventional factory finish. Well, on this side, some water must have dripped or something and has lifted the finish, and in this case, the finish has completely come off. I need to restore just those areas. So you can see that all the water damage is on this one side. In fact, not even the side itself. You can see cracks across the top here, this obviously, this surface, the edge, the side was left alone, which is nice, and then down here at the bottom. So what I want to do is tape off all the areas that have been unaffected. Uh, I'd like to take this handle off, but it's held on by some bolts way up in there. I'd have to take the clockworks out in order to get to it. Interestingly enough, one of the nuts is missing, but it's still held on by one of them, and I'm just going to tape around it. This top does have damage at this end, but I think that I will uh, touch that up and recoat it rather than scrape this down. The, the, these other areas I've got to take down to the bare wood. I can see where the lower, this lowest edge of the side panel is damaged. But I think I can touch that up too um, and respray the panel without redoing the whole thing. Now I've got to do these uh, moldings, and I have a variety of scrapers that might help me with that. You know, I've got a I've got a set here of uh, different shape scraper blades, and I also have a, a scratch beating tool. I'm not going to use the tool itself, but it comes with a set of blades of uh, a lot of different curves and sizes, and I think there's some in here also that I could use on some of these. Now I still think 
this little area on the side along the bottom here I don't think it's worth uh, scraping down this whole side for that. I'm going to sand that during near the end of the finishing process. I'm going to sand that area, touch it up, and then respray that side. All right, scraping's done. Uh, now I'll start in. Uh, I'll sand everything, and I'm going to uh, start with 150 and see if that gets me uh, where I need to be. I find that these uh, contour sanding blocks really come in handy for jobs like these. After sanding with 150, I sanded it all again really well with 220. Uh, the reason is, when I put stain on here, I really want to make sure it's not too dark. I'm going to do the finishing with lacquer aerosols, and I can adjust the color somewhat then. You know, I don't even know what kind of wood this is. We don't know what kind of stain they used originally. We've got to proceed carefully. The worst thing that can happen is you put stain on here and it's too dark. I grabbed a piece of uh, quarter-inch ply and sanded it up. It's a real nondescript uh, white wood. I also don't know what that is. Uh, and I grabbed some raw umber stain. Uh, I'm going to try that out because it doesn't have any red in it. As I've mentioned many times before doing touch-up work or work like this, you do not want to use a stain that's too red. And this is some medium dark walnut stain which might be useful. I'd, I'd have to thin it out a lot. I hope you can see that this stain is really greenish, really has no red in it. Um, and now I'm going to mix up some of this stain. I'm going to thin it out and try it, see what it looks like. You can see how obviously it's a lot lighter. Uh, maybe I need a little bit more walnut and a little bit of the raw umber. Hmm. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing here, especially up here where there's I left a little bit more on. It looks really good. So uh, bear in mind, I like what I'm seeing here, but this is just a random piece of wood. It really doesn't matter. What matters is how it looks on the clock. So I'll try a little bit. I'm close enough now that I will try a little bit on the back of it here. It still looks a little too red. Redder than this. It's hard to tell because it's lighter. I'll add a little bit more uh, raw umber to the mix here. That should darken it and uh, lessen the red, I hope. Well, I like what I'm seeing here. I'm going to go ahead and stain like this entire back edge and look again. The important thing is that, well, it looks good. It looks like the right color, and it looks a little lighter. You know, I like what I'm seeing here. Uh, it's a really good color. It's a little lighter, and I'll go with that. I don't want the end grain to get too dark. And like I said before, you do not want to stain something too dark. Uh, I'll stain it a little on the light side. You can see how good the color looks right here. But of course, at the same time, you can see that that stain kind of wicked up where that finish is damaged on this side. But I'm going to sand that anyway, sand the finish, and uh, hopefully I'll get that mark out. I've wiped it with some paint thinner here, but it doesn't seem to really help it. That finish was compromised, and I think the stain went right under it. All right, so I'll let the stain dry for a while, and then I'll seal these areas. Now, I'm going to tape off this side. I don't want to spray it yet. 
Now I'll give it a coat of uh, aerosol shellac. So last night, <clears throat> off camera, I gave it another coat of shellac. You know, its first coat soaked in pretty well. Second coat, it's sealed well now. So I can look at my color here and kind of spin this around. You can see that this cove molding's darker. The rest of it looks good. Uh, the top definitely looks light. I think what I need to do is I'm going to sand this with some 500 and then go over the moldings with a gray pad and then tone this with some raw umber. So now I'm going to tone it. This is an uh, <clears throat> aerosol lacquer with dye stain in it. I think before I said I was going to use uh, raw umber, but I'm going to use perfect brown. All right, this is dried overnight. Now it's not necessary to let these dry overnight. Uh, these lacquers can dry in an hour or two. This happens to have dried overnight. Yeah, it. Um, it looks really good. It's the right color. It's still uh, too light, so I'm just going to hit it again. And you can go, I can go right over it without sanding or anything. You don't want to sand if the finish has color in it. Yeah, this looks good. I really like the color I'm seeing in the top here. It's, it's a little bit lighter, but uh, I think the top was light before. In fact, I think it was even lighter than this. Very good. I'm going to uh, now spray all these parts that I've toned with a coat of gloss lacquer. All right, now this is dried overnight. So now I want to remove uh, a bunch of this paper. I need to have a look at this and see how my color's working. Yeah, this is so interesting. Uh, but my color looks good. It's funny that this front molding and this whole front is so light. And, uh, and then this molding here. And if you remember, I said, I thought the top was, was much lighter than the rest of it. And I think it was. This, this, and the top were all kind of bleached out. And so I may actually sand this. In fact, I will. I'm going to sand this and add a little color to this to make it more light. The sides. And uh, then I'll need to tackle this little touch up at the bottom of the side here. Okay, so now I can see uh, this needs a little toner, uh, this bottom needs a little toner here, and this really needs toner, the bottom here. I still have uh, little chips up here. I'm going to sand this area and respray it and then see if I need toner or not. So now I can do quick tape offs and tone these areas. Okay, I've let this dry for about 15-20 uh, minutes, and I will uh, hit it again. It's when you're using these aerosol toners, you got to go slow. It's really easy to make things too dark. Okay, I think this. I think my toning on these pieces is done. And so now I'll tackle this top and the damage here. So I'm going to sand this, sand this area as much as I dare. They used a lot of color in their finish too. And then I'll tone this top, and I'm hoping that that will then cover this little damaged area here. Now those little chipped areas didn't uh, disappear like I hoped they would. I'm going to touch them up uh, using a brush tip marker.
Okay, so I still have these touch-ups to deal with, but first I'm going to uh, get the whole case ready. I'm going to spray a final coat on the entire case. I'm going to sand this top. Everything else I'll do with a Scotch-Brite pad. This little chipped area here, I'm going to sand that a little bit. I'm going to use some uh, dye stain. This is perfect brown dye stain, but I've thinned it out. These light edges are better done with a regular furniture marker. All right, all my touch-ups done. Now I'm going to spray the entire case with satin black. Okay, I let this dry overnight. The final coat was, is really good. I feel a few little nits here and there. I think I'll go over it with the, uh, with the beeswax polish and the steel wool. I really like the... Uh, it really gives it a nice velvet feel and a soft sheen. There you go, this very nice carriage clock it had a lot of uh, sun damage and especially water damage all down this side. And you know, this video shows how these, uh, these factory finishes, which typically are nitrocellulose lacquer, are really repairable. They're completely compatible with the aerosol lacquers that I use for the repair. And uh, boy, it looks pretty good. I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice little desk clock. It's a Telecron from about 1936 called a Pyramid case. There's a little plate that goes here. And uh, the clock itself is in pretty good shape. Uh, it's been restored. What I've got to do is restore the case and it's just beat up. It has a lot of chipping and scratches. And on the back where this uh, setting stem comes out, someone had dug this out in order to get it out. And I've got to repair that. So, what to do about this hole here? You know, I think the first thing I'm going to do is put the works back in here and carefully mark where that stem exits this case. You can see it's not in the center of that hole. It's way down near the bottom there. Now, how can you drill a ragged hole like that? Well, there's a couple different ways, things that you could do, but what I'm going to do is cut a piece of dowel and use 5-minute epoxy 
to glue that dowel in there. And then that will give me uh, you know, a way to use a brad point bit because of the center there to drill it. Okay, I've, uh, I've got to drill a larger hole around this, uh, you know, kind of like a countersink type of effect, just like these others. So when drilling a larger hole, you know, around the smaller hole, your bit can skip out easily. So what I do is I uh, reverse the bit at first, try to get it started. See, it's made the indentation there. Yay, it worked. Then you can just screw the knob on there. It looks like I need a little putty right here. Now I'll clean the entire case with some crud cutter. Now I'm going to uh, sand with uh, 220. Now I'm going to wipe this off with a Mohawk wax wash remover. And it's just, uh, it must be re related to paint thinner, but it helps uh, clean any contaminants off of here. I don't know that I have any contaminants. I want to get some stain on the repair area. I'm going to use some uh, dye stain, perfect brown, thinned out a bit. Now this was most likely uh, finished with nitrocellulose lacquer, and my uh, aerosols are acrylic lacquer. So I resurrected my uh, little touch-up gun, 
Uh, and I've got it uh, loaded up with uh, conventional nitrocellulose lacquer. All right. Uh, off camera, I put a second coat uh, on the clock case. Now I'm going to sand it. Yeah, now you're better able to see the, uh, you know, the crazes and, and cracking in the old finish. And I can also see now where uh, my touch-up's better here in this area. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this with uh, 500 grit and, uh, and a gray pad and then do the touch-ups. I'm going to let this dry, uh, check my touch-ups, then I'm going to put two or three more coats on it today. All right, I've let this dry overnight. Uh, I'm going to see if I can rub it out. I'm going to start by uh, sanding with 1200 wet or dry paper uh, using water as a lubricant. Now I'm going to use a, uh, a medium grade compound. This compound happens to be black, I like that. And I'm going to use a white scotch bright pad to apply it. I'll stick with water as a lubricant.
Okay, I think I'll uh, put the works back in it. Well, there you go. A really nice Art Deco desk clock, uh, Telecron Electric from 1936. You know, the case was just uh, beat up a bit, uh, you know, from use. Had some, like, dents along the edges, uh, scratches, uh, chips. And, of course, the, uh, the back had been gouged out where the uh, adjustment stem goes. All those battle scars are still there. I sprayed a few coats of lacquer on it and I've rubbed it out. It looks great, but uh, it's still original and I think it looks pretty good.